Milos, we are back for uh, for you to give us a piece of your mind. I love this series. Have you got some good feedback from this series so far? I got a lot of feedback and I got a lot of questions on my Instagram. I say, when are you going to talk about this? When are you going to talk about that? Nice. So I think uh, video agreement and Jay's, I will start my like educational series. Awesome. And uh, actually tell all the guys that they want to hear it, you know, at once. So I don't have to repeat it a million times. I mean. Sorry. You guys, uh, I want to help, but it's impossible to answer every, everybody's question. So watch uh, the episodes. Yeah, so watch <laughs> the episodes. I, absolutely, that's what I told them. Jay Carter TV, a uh, new frame of mind. Okay. So I'm going to start with the most basic thing that everybody should know. And it is about caloric requirement. When we uh, do the diet, pre-contest diet, off-season diet, doesn't matter what it is, we need to know what we're doing. You can't just guess. So. All of you guys, beginners, advanced, guys that were following wrong diet and uh, shut your metabolism down and gain a lot of weight and guys that are preparing for the show, there are certain rules you have to follow here. Uh, first, you, you start with the physiolog physiological needs of body, okay? Everybody, doesn't matter who we're talking about, we have a, uh, what our heart needs, how much energy to you know, beat and the lungs to breathe and, you know, brain to, to function. Survive, yeah. Yeah, survive. This is a physiological need. All the organs require a lot. So there is a, something called a basal metabolic rate, BMR, and it's determined by your height, weight, age, and gender. Uh, medically, most common used formula, quite accurate, is Harris Benedict formula. And it pretty much, this is uh, what they use in the hospitals when they, they take you there in your critical condition. They need to feed you and they need to, they need to uh, put enough calories to maintain your life. So this is how I start with everybody. First, give me a height, weight, age, gender. And you can go on a BMR calculator on the, on the uh, internet, you know, put all your uh, you know, things and you're gonna come up with the, your basal metabolic rate. That means, that you in a state of coma, right? If you'll be in a hospital not moving, not blinking, really, this is how much calories your body's gonna use you know, just to maintain life. So I always start that uh, this would be a base. So now when you go to sleep, that resting metabolic rate is quite close, but it's a little bit higher, but I would consider that this is your BMR as you're sleeping. So for somebody, a big, bigger guy, that maybe we have a BMR of, uh, 2,400 calories a day, that would be easily calculated as 100 calories per hour. So when you sleep uh, every hour, how many hours you sleep, six, seven, eight hours, you know, consider this is 100 calories an hour that your body needs to use to maintain life. Now, as soon as you wake up, your metabolism picks up. And even if you're completely inactive, it's about 30, 35% higher. So now, you are at complete rest, doing computer work or whatever else you're doing, you know, not physically active really, you're burning 130, 140 calories, right? And now, as you know, anything that you do physically will start burning more calories. So if you go on the internet and pull like one hour of house cleaning and, uh, you know, ironing or whatever else, it's like four, 500 calories an hour, right? It's uh, amazing what physical activity can uh, do. So now, uh, for our bodybuilders, fitness competitors, figure competitors, bikini, doesn't matter, right? If you're gonna wake up in the morning, which most of us do, and do that mandatory fasted uh, state cardio, you're gonna start using a fuel that the aerobic activity is using, which is fatty acid, right? So fats, when you do the cardio, you burn fats. As you are sleeping for six, seven, eight hours, right? And you wake up in the morning, you have a perfect opportunity to burn some body fat. And I call that fat burning phase of the day. This day, you wake up, you don't do nothing. Not even BCAAs, EAAs, gluten, and nothing. You cannot take any nutrients because amino acids are fuel. It can be converted into the fuel. So in completely empty stomach, you do the cardio, you're gonna have one billion percent for sure burn some body fat. Now you go for the remainder of the day. So now I have a, a two more phases, maintenance phase and anabolic phase. As I talk about uh, in my last uh, frame of mind for Jay Cutler, 
uh, my hyperemia advantage theory, you know, so my training is my anabolic phase. This is when I try to push everything in the muscle. But after cardio, until the training, I'm going to have a, that maintenance phase in every two and a half, three hours, doesn't matter how you structure your diet. You're going to put enough calories to maintain, not to gain, not to lose. Right? Uh, at that particular uh, times, you can choose, you know, three different things. You can have uh, all three micronutrients, protein, carbohydrates, and fat, for a lucky, fast uh, uh, metabolism type of guys, ectomorphic, they can eat anything. You can, you know, mix just good nutrients, protein, carbs, and fat. For uh, uh, endomorphic, a little bit more fat, they have a slower metabolism, more than likely I would tell them don't even touch the carbs, you know, keep the protein and fats. As uh, long as you don't touch the carbohydrates, right, you're not going to you know, trigger the insulin release, insulin stops fat burning, so it inhibits fat burning, so I would much rather you have a good source of protein and good fats until you're ready to train. And uh, for uh, bodybuilder guys, especially that uh, we are going into this mass building phase, you know, I don't mind them having uh, protein and carbs by all means. Usually, my first meal would be uh, no carbs, so you continue that fasted state, you know, at night until the morning, you do the cardio, and first meal, you know, so you have a three more, more hours possibility to keep burning fat. Now, we have to talk about caloric requirement, right? So how much calories you should take? If I take as many calories as I'm gonna burn, right? Uh, I'm never gonna be able to, you know, lose body fat, right? So we have to create a little bit caloric deficit to, you know, burn some energy reserve stored in the body fat. So those guys are gonna calculate their pro, uh, caloric requ requirement and make three, 500 calorie deficit, right? Uh, in extreme situation, I would go even 1,000. However, I've seen coaches that starve their clients to do uh, like, you know, diets that are 2,000 calories deficient. And usually, you know, that would shut down metabolism very fast. They would sacrifice some hard-earned muscle mass and then uh, they would have a, a you know, hard time picking it up later. So much rather take 16, 18, 20 weeks out of the show and slowly die down, you know, inspect what you expect, you know, look in the mirror, monitor, you know, check your body fat, and uh, with this three to 500 calorie deficit, you're gonna accomplish it, you know, within six, eight weeks, you know, very, very efficiently, and then you're gonna have another four, six weeks for, for fine tuning. Now, speaking of these calories, right? I was talking about the guys that, let's say, have a 2,400 calorie BMR. If you're gonna do like one hour of cardio, add five, 600 calories. If you're gonna train in a gym, add another five, 600 calories per hour. If somebody trains twice a day, right? You know, multiply this by two. Another thing you have to, you know, think about it, as soon as you have some physical activity, like me and Matt just now finished the training, you know, even though now I'm in complete rest, my metabolism is picked up because we just did the, all the crazy giant sets and everything else. Or same with the cardio. As soon as you finish cardio and you stop, now you're not longer uh, walking on a treadmill or something, but your metabolism is way more than your BMR type of uh, uh, metabolism, right? So uh, when you add uh, 500 for uh, cardio, 1,000 for training, that's already 1,500, plus your 2,400, now you are already close to 4,000, right? And that elevation of metabolism after cardio, after first, after second session, you're probably close to 5,000 calories. And that's why for some of you that uh, are kind of like, how come bodybuilders can eat five, 6,000 calories and do, don't even do the cardio and be lean, right? Well, because you have like such a high uh, caloric expenditure. Now, speaking of macronutrients, right? How do we structure the diet? We know that uh, there are energy nutrients, carbohydrates and fat, and there are uh, building nutrients, proteins, okay? Amino acids is the building box of protein, are only building material for your body. There is no way that carbohydrates and fat, you know, can be used as a building material. But protein can be very easily converted as energy. So first thing that I do with everybody, I tell them, extremely high protein intake, which a lot of doctors would complain, and to all those doctors that uh, would complain, I would challenge them to put any study, 
that a healthy individual with a healthy renal system kidneys right, would have an issue with what would be a toxic amount of protein. I, for example, uh, did uh, 500 to 550 grams of protein daily for 15 years straight. Okay? I have some bodybuilders that I train that would do 600 and over. I have some ladies doing three to 400 daily, which is, oh, you don't need it. Well, uh, do you need it or not? That's uh, questionable. If I follow the science and just what I'm told, you know, I get certain results. Then I said, let me be free-minded and increase the protein, double up or triple it, and then see what happens. And boom, results are ast astonishing. I actually have a few uh, competitors that even went higher than I recommended, and they even further increase their muscle mass. So uh, my protein suggestion is minimum for any human being on earth is one gram per pound of body weight, one gram. Bodybuilders, two grams, okay? Competitors, you can go easily two and a half, three grams of protein per uh, in a pound of body weight. So this is, you know, first thing. Now with that, for that maintenance phase, you have to calculate what would be your maintenance phase. You can add amount of carbs to add up, you know, to the amount of calories you need for three hours, or fat for amount of calories that you, you need for these three hours, or combination of. So now, as you have a fat burning phase, you maintain it, and you came to the uh, anabolic phase when you train, as a you know, touch the subject last time, you prepare the body, you saturate the blood, you put all the, you know, anabolic, anti-catabolic fat burning nutrients, supplements, right? You're gonna saturate the blood, and that blood is gonna now go to the muscle, and you're gonna be shoving everything into the muscle. Right after the training, there is again that huge window of opportunity, first couple of hours, or by, uh, by science, next six hours, physiological preference of your body is to continue, you know, replenishing what uh, was just done, which means you, you break down the muscle tissue, you empty your glycogen storage, ATP storage, and everything else. So, you know, body uh, always reacts upon what you do throughout the day, right? So if your muscles are affected, you know, damaged and need replenishment, all these nutrients are going to be going now towards uh, replenishing and this is that anabolic window, this is my anabolic phase. So if you do this correctly, right, you have a fat burning phase, maintenance phase and then anabolic phase. Some days you're going to choose, I'm not going to do the cardio, I'm lazy, that doesn't matter. Okay, that day maybe you didn't do that uh, fat burning phase, you have to reduce your caloric intake by 500 calories you know, sleep longer, no problem, but continue with the maintenance phase as soon as you wake up, next meal, next meal, next meal. So my diet is not really a 24-hour diet, it's like every three-hour diet. This is what I did since 1991 and I competed extensively throughout the 1990s and my diet would, you know, just be based on this, okay, I'm going to do more cardio, I'm going to, you know, train twice a day, this is the only thing that I adjust. When I see uh, for myself or for my athletes in a uh, anabolic phase now in a let's say off season which I never consider off season but okay in a mass building period you know I'm uh, inclined to give them a little bit more calories but at that time I choose you know to avoid fats and I do carbohydrates and, and protein because we can push carbohydrates into the glycogen storage and I would bet my life that the science uh, is not right when they consider this human body can store a maximum 750 grams of glycogen. You know, uh, guys that train, they have a com uh, complete uh, uh, glycogen depletion several times. Your body always adjusts by, you know, super compensating. You can now store more and more. So the uh, guys like Jay Cutler, for example, that was eating over 1,000 uh, grams of carbs a day, right? Myself included, Dennis Fault and, and many other. You know, you do this constantly, right? Uh, you experiment, and I think I mentioned for uh, Dennis Wall for Olympia, for carb loading we use 5,000 grams of carbs in three days. Now, if you consider that uh, you know, glycogen storage is 750, you know, he should have been filled up after 750 or 1,000, you know, deduct you know, calories throughout the day that he would burn, but usually when you're competing in these last three days, you are resting, you're not doing anything, so the caloric expenditure would be much 
you know, less. So I'm saying that um, bodybuilders have a you know, dramatically higher glycogen storage of any other athletes because of what we do. So to generalize again for all the people that are listening, you know, and if you have any questions, you know, you can you know, put it on Jake TV under or uh, you know send me an Instagram link last time. This is how you start, and you can start if you're a personal trainer, you know, make sure that your client would give you you know the height, weight, age, gender. You calculate uh, the BMR. Okay, then you ask them what they do. If they have a physical work, right? They need more calories. If they have a you know uh, office work, they, they need less. And then if they can do one cardio, two cardio sessions, one workout, two cardio, two workouts a day, you have to fill up right nutrients throughout the day. And what I would suggest, and I hope that ma makes sense, if our body has all three macronutrients in exact amounts that you need it, what you need is there. It can function properly and completely. If something is missing, okay. Nobody has to make one out of the other, you know. So, if uh, you choose to have a, a less carbohydrates, okay, and a very low fat, not enough energy, then these amino acids that can be used to replenish your enzymes and hormones and tissues and hair and muscles, <laughs> amino acids going to be converted into the energy and fuel, right? So you're compromising. Uh, if you have a you know too much carbohydrates now, there is no more. Uh, you know, storage, you know, available, of course, they can convert into the fat, right? If you have a way too much fat, obviously, you know, what not used will be stored. Nobody wants that. But if you really calculate, so you're not guessing, you know, and this is how I always start, even though there are a little bit differences, yeah, genetically, you know, somebody says to me, I'm, you know, uh, super fast metabolism, yeah, you know, your heart, and my heart is going to, you know, use about the same amount of calories. Liver, you know, the other organs, you know, pretty much the same, except if you're not really overloaded with something else. But there's a minuscule differences. What is real difference in caloric uh, requirement is energy expenditure. What do you do physically? What do you, what do you, what do you think about this new? I call it a fad. In the past, uh, Jay used to tell me when he would compete for a competition for 16 weeks, he would just diet 16 weeks straight, never cheat from the month he started. I'm sure that's always the same yeah, for you. Yeah. What do you think about those new coach now that every so day they give you a refeed, refeed, yeah. refeed, which is cheat, basically cheat day. What do you think about that? Well, there's a, you know, not any you know, sense to it really, uh, but a lot of people do it. And I would even uh, you know, sometimes say, okay, have a cheat meal. In, it's not because cheat uh, nutrients are healthier and better for you. It's going to fill up your muscle better. But it's going to psychologically give you like, oh, uh, a like, craving, you know, and like, okay, it's going to be so much easier. Not because, uh, let's say, whatever you're going to cheat with, uh, burgers and fries and milkshake and bullshit and pancakes and all that, yeah. uh, are nutrients from there better than if you're going to have like 150 grams of carbs from pasta or like good, good fats from, let's say, avocado, some nice macadamia oil, avocado oil, olive oil, coconut oil with a steak and salmon and shit like that. no way. Is anybody going to convince me? But it's, oh, I don't want clean food. I want a junk. But, you know, uh, again, for those of you, you know, I, I give many of my clients cheat meal. It's not because uh, I, I want them to cheat. You know, I want them just to, you know, get rid of their craving. Okay. I, would, I would tell you one thing that, you know, for me back in the day, I write everything down and it would be like, okay, I crave something so badly. But then I would try to like improvise and compromise and make like uh, something similar from a, from a uh, healthy foods, right? Yeah. And then you have it, uh, but you still didn't satisfy that craving. <laughs> and the next time, you know, and then after a while I, I decided, you know what? I, I died so hard throughout the year. If I'm going to crave something, I'm going to let myself, you know, do it. So it's more of a mental break. Yeah, it's a mental else. break. It's, okay. it's, you know, you tell me what sense does it make that those nutrients from cheat meal would do more to you than, uh, than uh, clean, yeah. clean carbs, clean fats, you know, you know, stuff like that. So it has nothing to do with refeed. It's more a mental break. Absolutely. Here's a mental break for you. They, 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 can, they can call it a refeed, right? It could be That's the word. You heard yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. I've seen it. But refeed is like, yeah, okay, if anybody's going to tell me uh, scientific base on that, 
you know. Okay, I, I'm so interested to hear it. No, but I, I'm also giving them. Yeah. I usually tell them, okay, uh, what my guys want to cheat on? You know, bunch of sushi. Sushi is uh, not it's to not, cheat. It's kind of clean. Yeah, it's clean. I give them in, in uh, their diet. Yeah, I mean, yeah. uh, you know, uh, Peter is right now doing two salmon meals. You know, like sushi salmon, yeah. you know, out of six. Yeah. Uh, okay, uh, pasta, great carbohydrates, so say, you know, knock the stuff out. Pancakes, load up, you know, like what the Rock is doing, you've seen a you know, stack of pancakes. But, uh, uh, you know, the, the junk food, you know, I'm against it, uh, you know, but uh, I, if this is what you crave, that's gonna, you know, give you a mental break and you're gonna continue, you know, uh, hard, you know, so be it. Oh, great. All right, all right. Okay. Yeah. I'm going to get it out. So, yeah, the, the, that's you know, pretty much it. Now, I'm just going to tell a warning to a lot of uh, bikini girls and, uh, and uh, figure girls. And, you know, for whatever reason, you know, many coaches just starve them. Starve, 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 starve. You know, you, uh, just as us men, need high quality nutrients, good calories. You're going to be active. Your BMR is dramatically uh, uh, lesser than ours because you're smaller and. Uh, uh, you're gonna, your metabolic rate is going to be probably 1,300, 1,500 calories you know, uh, at rest. But then you add this 500 calories on the cardio, and then you add this 500 calories, right? You know, so there you go, 2,500 calories easy. So if you're downing on 1,000 calories a day, you know, question your, your coach why I'm starving myself. Because malnutrition, you know, missing all the important essential nutrients, can backfire, create all the kind of, kinds of hormonal problems that they don't want to have, you know, start, you know, with the dry skin, uh, losing hair and all that stuff. So, you know, be a little bit more courageous. If I, I'm your coach and you ask me a question, of course I have to answer it. I have to tell you the reason why I put you on this kind of diet, on this many calories and timing of my meals. Does this have to be necessarily to the minute? No, of course, it's very easy. For me also, to just give them, okay, meal one, meal two, meal three, meal five. But I like the structure that I usually give the, the times. Also, what I like uh, to, to ensure, you know, uh, if uh, um, my athletes are eating frequently, right? I, I give them like some essential amino acids and glutamine, uh, you know, in between the meals, like small little portions for a woman, maybe five grams each, for a man, 10 grams each. So I ensure you know, the circulation in a, in a blood flow, blood influx of uh, all the important essential amino acids at all time and glutamine. It's not essential amino acid, but it's, you know, so uh, used in uh, stressful situations and in, in the workouts. So this, you know, for bodybuilders, I would sometimes add leucine and you know, put creatine and, and other things. So you guys can be creative with this. Whatever you research, you add it. But basic caloric intake and requirement should be number one step. First, determine what your body needs. It's not all the same days. You're gonna train four days, three days you're not gonna train. Obviously, you have to correct the caloric intake on the, on the non-training days. Right. Yeah, so this is the only difference. But uh, really, uh, start from there, ensure that you have a sufficient amount of protein. And now, if you're dieting for the contest and you wanna get uh, super lean and you heard about keto diets, yes, I said many times before, ketogenic diet is the most effective diet you know, to burn body fat. No question, it's, it's no brainer. But in ketogenic diet, more than often, you cannot be maximally uh, um, uh, anabolic. You, yeah. can, you cannot uh, you have maximal hypertrophy, and often you jeopardize and you don't make as much muscle, or you don't keep as much muscle. So, you know, my modify uh, ketogenic diet, I, I use most of the day as a keto, and then I, I refeed. No, I, I put uh, good carbs and, uh, and uh, enough uh, amino acids and protein in my anabolic phase. You know, this is all. So okay. that, that would be, I think, uh, you know, first educational thing about caloric requirement, pre-contest, off-season, you know, uh, resting metabolic rate, and then uh, uh, what you do throughout the day to ensure that at all times, your body has what it needs sufficient amount of protein, all the essential amino acids, all the essential fatty acids, vitamins, minerals, right, that should be basic, but then energy, okay, fat and carbs, it can be monitored. Both together, one or the other, or just eliminate, uh, uh, you know, fats 
and go high protein, high carbs if you're bodybuilder in the building phase. Or cut the carbs if you and have a protein and good fats if you had fat burning phase pre-contest uh, period. Boom. Thanks, Milos.